Ja, noch sehr. Kann start? Right. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Giorgio Vallortigara. I am currently the director of the Center for Mind Brain Sciences of the University of Trento. And uh, uh, um, welcome. And uh, I, I will try to provide you with a very quick overview of uh, uh, the center with particular reference to the um, scientific activities. The teaching activities will be covered uh, later on by my colleagues, uh, Professor Zampini and Professor Pavani. Uh, so uh, the center was started in 2007 and the aim of the center is obviously to study the activity of the brain, uh, both in normal, ordinary physiological conditions and uh, in pathological conditions, and obviously also to educate the next generation of uh, neuroscientists. Uh, the CIMEC is mm, mostly a multicultural center, uh, about one half of our research fellows are from abroad for a, a variety of countries, as you can notice, and also an important part, just a little less than one half of the PIs, the principal investigators, the scientists who have a permanent position at the center are from abroad. Overall, uh, the CIMEC has uh, now about 150 people and the distribution is uh, like this. Uh, 36 uh, are PIs, research scientists with a permanent position. We have about 50 uh, research fellows. These are mainly postdocs uh, uh, with a temporary position, typically between three, five years. And then about 20, 22 people as part of the administrative staff and technicians. We have quite a lot of technicians because of the high-tech uh, setup and apparatus which are in the center, and about 40 people uh, are PhD. They are here uh, with scholarships as P PhD. Uh, I will try to describe briefly the structure and the labs which are available to the CIMEC. Um, I will describe only the yellow part because the blue one is for teaching, so it will be described by uh, Professor Zampi. Um, the different labs are unfortunately a little bit dispersed from a geographical point of view. Uh, this is the LNIF, which is the neuroimaging part of the center. This is the part probably with the higher, highest content in terms of uh, technological aspects. We have a scanner, a fMRI uh, high field for Tesla machine, a MEG, a magnetoencephalographic uh, system, and a variety of other labs including eye tracking, TMS, transcranic magnetic stimulation, uh, and other labs. This is located in Mattarello, uh, uh, which is mid halfway between Trento and Rovereto, about 20 minutes by car. And this is the part devoted to the investigation of the human brain using non-invasive procedure, that is the uh, modern techniques of neuroimaging. And you can see here some of the setup and uh, machine we have available. Uh, then, and this is a part which is in Rovereto, we have the traditional, uh, more traditional EPL labs, that is experimental psychology and psychophysics labs. And these are devoted to the study of behavior, uh, kinematics, multisensory labs, and also electroencephalographic labs. Here you can see some of the labs which are located in the building just in front of us in uh, Palazzo Federigotti. Again, these are techniques to study mainly uh, the behavior of human subjects. Uh, 
Uh, then we have a part of the center which is associated with research in uh, um, uh, computational sciences, artificial intelligence, and computational linguistics. This is the CLIC. These are colleagues uh, who are mostly interested in the, in, in the study of the use of semantic and encyclopedic knowledge in communication, the study of multimodal communication, and the study of adaptive interfaces. Um, basically, these colleagues are computational linguists who are interested to interact with neuroscientists. Then we have the wet part of the center, the more biological part, the annual cognition and neuroscience labs. Uh, this is located in Manifattura Tabacchi, Rovereto South, about uh, 10 minutes uh, uh, or say 15 minutes walking from here. And we have a variety of animal species in the animal house. And these are models for investigation of brain activities. We have fish, in particular zebrafish, which is an important animal model for molecular biology studies, traditional rodents, mice, rats, and a variety of knockout mice for investigation of autism, schizophrenia, and other disease, um, and insects and birds. We have also a collaboration, these are not in the animal house, for purely behavioral studies with non-human primates. This is run with a zoo park near Verona. And also we have another part of the lab which is devoted to the study of uh, the uh, imaging using the near, the near uh, 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 infrared spectro spectroscopy uh, in newborns, and this is located in the Rovereto Hospital. Uh, obviously, we have all uh, the variety of the traditional techniques uh, for investigation of the neurobiology of brain and behavior, so microscopy, single cell recording, immunohistochemistry, uh, etc., etc. Then we have the clinical part of the center, the neuropsychological part, the chairing, and this is uh, a collaboration, an agreement between the University of Trento and the local authority of the health system of uh, the provincial of Trento, the APSS. So the sharing provides also clinical services. There are a certain number of clinical neurologists, physiotherapists, uh, uh, and other medical support. Uh, for patients. We are interested in patients to study them also, but also to provide uh, some neuro rehabilitation for uh, patients with strokes and other types of uh, um, uh, mental or cerebral diseases. Uh, then we have a series of labs which are run jointly with uh, uh, other research institutions in uh, the provincia. Uh, most notably, the first, we have two labs with the FBK, uh, the Fondazione Bruno Kessler. One lab is the Neuroinformatics Lab, and the other is the com Computational Cognition Lab. These are labs in which, again, neuroscientists collaborate with computer scientists, basically, and uh, scholars in the field of artificial intelligence to develop uh, models but also applications for brain sciences. And another important collaboration is with the Fondazione MAC. Fondazione MAC is the most important uh, uh, applied biology and agricultural research institution in the province of Trento and one of the most important in the country. And with Fondazione MAC we have uh, a joint lab uh, devoted to the study of insect neurobiology and neuroecology. And we, together with the Department of Physics, this lab ran also a very sophisticated two-photon microscopy machine uh, to investigate in vivo the activity of very teeny brains like the brains of bees or other insects, uh, which are of interest not just for basic science but also from 
the applied point of view because some of these insects are pests of, uh, say, fruit trees in, in the local uh, territory, in the local area. Uh, we have also a, a, a research station, a research field, uh, uh, about three kilometers from Rovereto in an area, a very nice area. This is run together with a local museum. Um, and this is an area for ethological research. Uh, there is a variety of animal species, including uh, tortoises, uh, jungle foals, uh, corvid species, some fish also in the lab. It's mostly for ethological and naturalistic research, but also for teaching purposes, in the sense that together with the museum, we try to uh, make possible a first uh, uh, in meeting with animals in a natural environment for the citizens in Rovereto and the children of Rovereto schools. Very important is the collaboration with the IIT, the Istituto Italiano di Tecnologia, the Italian Institute of Technology, and uh, uh, this will be described by, I think in the afternoon, by the director of the IIT in Rovereto, uh, Professor Angelo Bifone. And they are mainly working in psychophysics, but also with animals. So there is another scanner um, for small animals, seven Tesla machine, for studying the brain of mice, and in particular mice, uh, which are models of diseases. Uh, skip the educational part. Uh, I, I will describe very briefly the research activity of the center and the funding of the center. So number of publication, this is not terribly updated, but there has been a big increase starting from the very start of the center, and in particular, the scientific productivity as measured by number of citations for year, and very important, the number of ERC grants that has been awarded to the center. You know probably that the ERC is the most important uh, uh, source of funding in Europe for basic sciences, and we have got eight ERC grants for more than 10 million euros uh, awarded by research scientists in the center, uh, more than one half of the overall ERC of the overall Trento University. We also got other grants from other charities or research funding. Uh, an important part of the center activities has been devoted to uh, um, communication at different levels. First of all, in the forms of workshop in the different areas of the center, neuroimaging, neurobiology, animal cognition, uh, experimental psychology. So uh, there are every year at least a couple of uh, workshop uh, which are specific for the scientific community. Uh, but we also run a variety of uh, meeting and workshops for the large, for the general public, in particular, the so-called uh, neuroscience aperitif, neuroscience cafe, and also a series of uh, um, public lecture for the general public with uh, the presence of very renowned people like uh, the neuropsychiatrist uh, Vittorio, Vittorino Andreoli and the science writer uh, uh, Piero Angela. Uh, we, have, we also maintain strict collaboration with the cultural, not just scientific, but also cultural uh, institution in this uh, small but very nice town in particular with the MART and the Museo Civico. Every year we have an ethology day um, for, for the citizens of Rovereto, irrespective of the bad weather. Uh, we also run together with the Cibio, our twin center devoted to molecular biology, the Olympics of neurosciences. and. Uh, to conclude, just a mention about the future. As I, uh, as I said, uh, one problem of the center, which is also affecting in some way students, is that the different labs, the different parts, are located in different areas. 
Well, distances in this part of the country are not really a problem, but say, in any case, moving from Rovereto to Mattarello would require, say, 20 minutes, moving from uh, Palazzo Federigotti to the ICN lab in Manifattura would require about 10 minutes. But our hope for the near future would be to have a unique place, a unique home for all the center. And this home will be Manifattura Tabacchi, where the university has decided to devote three large buildings to the center. This one, which is already under restructuration and is uh, completed for one third, which is hosting the uh, wet neurobiological labs of ACN lab. Then there will be a central part for administration, another part for IIT and also administration. This building will be for the clinical part of experimental psychology labs. And here, where now there is this sort of barrack that will be destroyed, and a new building is expected to be completed in 2016, uh, for the neuroimaging with the moving of the Mattarello labs in Manifattura Tobacco. So at the end we will have a sort of a square of the neurosciences with the biological part, the neuroimaging part and the clinical part facing each other and that will be probably one of the most important and we hope the most important neuroscience research institute in Italy and probably one of the most relevant in Europe. Thank you very much for your attention. I, I will leave the floor to Professor Zampini, I guess. introduction uh, given by Professor Vallortigara. So I'm Massimiliano Zampini. I'm the uh, uh, coordinator of the Master in Cognitive Science. And uh, we are here for trying to uh, explain you what's the, the goal of the Master, how the Master is organized, and what are the possibilities that you could get from uh, uh, following or attending our uh, master courses. Um, so uh, the goal of uh, our master is mainly to provide you with the skills and knowledge for try to become or uh, uh, to become an independent and hopefully successful researcher. So the idea is that if you uh, uh, follow, attend our courses, you should learn uh, the theoretical and methodological uh, uh, knowledges for uh, uh, really try to start your possible career in the uh, research field. I'm not just saying the research field in the academia, it could be in the academia, but it could be also in the, as a consultant in private companies, for instance. Uh, some of uh, our students have then decided to uh, uh, carry on with the career in the, uh, in the PhD course. Uh, some other have decided to uh, pursue their career in the private environment. And I have also uh, many of uh, colleagues that are, uh, for instance, supporting uh, uh, private uh, uh, um, independent reality like uh, Google or Facebook. We have uh, um, uh, colleagues that are uh, uh, providing their uh, knowledge uh, for supporting uh, uh, this big uh, company, for instance. So it's not a research just for uh, in, in the academia, uh, but it's mainly f we try to provide you the, the necessary knowledge for becoming 
a, a, a researcher, both, as I told you, theoretical and methodological knowledges. So how to, uh, uh, to understand, to, to interpret the, the, the literature in the neuroscience and uh, um, uh, in the cognitive science field, uh, how to start a, a, a project, a research project, how to make a hypothesis, how to collect data, how to program an experiment, for instance. Those are the uh, necessary skills that we try to provide uh, you. And uh, uh, we have decided to have this master course uh, with the interdisciplinary approach in uh, in the study of the mind and brain system, but also in the human-machine interaction. For doing so, we have uh, splitted our master course, course in two tracks. Then I explain uh, uh, later on uh, uh, how it, it is organized, but uh, uh, this is the, uh, mainly uh, the topics uh, that we are trying to, uh, uh, to teach you. We are, uh, the official language in the master course is English. So, uh, the reason why is uh, quite uh, straightforward and obvious. Uh, English is uh, uh, the official language in the uh, uh, research uh, community uh, and so for, for research. But also there is uh, another less obvious reason. We have tried to create an international environment. We have already, as uh, uh, Professor Vallortigara explained to you, uh, uh, an um, international center. Many of my colleagues are coming from abroad, are not Italian. But we are trying also attracting students coming from abroad. And uh, from uh, last year, we have attracted, uh, uh, I think, uh, Half of uh, the student, uh, half of uh, non-Italian students. So uh, from last year, half of, of the students were c coming from foreign countries, from Europe or also from the States, from other uh, uh, part of, of, of the world. Um, and this is, uh, I think, uh, uh, a quite uh, uh, unique uh, uh, situation in Italy, in, at least in the uh, cognitive science field. There might be other uh, master course, international course, but uh, uh, this is, I might say, one of the unique with such uh, an international environment. Uh, so, as I told you, we have the, the, our master courses are divided in two uh, tracks, uh, the cognitive neuroscience one and the language and multimodal interaction one. Uh, these are uh, two tracks almost independent in the sense that uh, uh, many of, uh, uh, we have some courses that are shared among uh, the two tracks but uh, some of them are peculiar of the cognitive neuroscience course and some other are peculiar of the language and multimodal interaction tracks. Uh, in the today uh, presentation, uh, okay, sorry, uh, Raffaella Bernardi will introduce the uh, language and multimodal interaction track. So later on, she will explain you how it is organized. Uh, let me say a few words about uh, the neuroscience track uh, and the, and the, and the, the share uh, uh, courses or the share aspects that we have among the cognitive neuroscience and language multimodal interaction. So uh, we have uh, some uh, obligatory courses, optional courses and free choice courses, internship and thesis. They are for both, for the cognitive neuroscience and for the language multimodal interaction. Uh, some of the obligatory courses are common, a few of them. Most of them are for each course. 
And uh, then the regulation is the same, administrative support is the same, uh, Claudia Neri is, support, is supporting both language multimodal and cognitive neuroscience students, and as I say, some of uh, the courses. Just to give you uh, a, a flavor of what is the cognitive neuroscience track, uh, the, cons the cognitive neuroscience track is, to po is supposed to train uh, uh, with, the, with an experience to provide you knowledge uh, in, the, in the field of experimental psychology or more in general in neuroimaging. So you could learn how to run experiments in a behavioral setup, but also how to use uh, MRI, EG, TMS. Not all of them at the same time or in, during the master's course. Uh, we provide you some uh, uh, knowledge, skills about all the techniques, and then hopefully you could decide to uh, follow uh, an internship, a research project, using one of those techniques. Uh, and as uh, Giorgio has explained to you, we have both here in uh, Rovereto, we have mainly the behavioral uh, uh, labs, with, uh, with uh, also an EEG facilities, and the fMRI TMS labs are in uh, uh, Mattarello. And then if you are interested in animal cognition, you could go to uh, Manifattura and follow research project over there. Uh, in the Cointin Science, we have, uh, this is the, the, the structure, we have uh, mandatory courses these mandatory courses are mainly in the cognitive neuroscience field. We have Foundation of Cognitive Psychology, Foundation of Cognitive Neuroscience, Foundation of Brain Imaging, Intro to Human Language. Uh, this, uh, the, the, the main aim of those courses is to provide you key uh, knowledge, theoretical background in cognitive psychology and cognitive neuroscience, uh, at the master level. We know that some of you are coming from a psychological neuroscientific background. They have uh, done their undergraduate degree in uh, psychology neuroscience. Uh, some of you have no idea of what neuroscience is, or really a, a, a vague idea. And uh, what uh, uh, we try to provide is to, to provide you this knowledge but at the master level. So uh, if you are deciding to uh, uh, apply for the master course and you have no, no uh, uh, knowledge of neuroscience or cognitive psychology, it's, be it's better that you try to uh, uh, fill this gap in, 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 in your knowledge. So try to uh, to uh, study uh, some of really basic, uh, maybe textbook. Uh, in the, before starting the new uh, year, we we'll provide you with uh, basic references for uh, uh, for then able to attend uh, these uh, these courses at the master level. Uh, then uh, we provide you. Uh, uh, information about the, how to use the different brain, how the, the, the different brain or neuroimaging technique works and also an intro to human language. Uh, then we have uh, courses, more uh, uh, in methodological and statistic courses. Uh, if you do research, you should know how to uh, uh, design an experiment how to analyze your data. And so this is the, the, the aim of those uh, courses. This is mainly the aim. And then also, if you want to run an experiment, usually you need to program it. You need to know uh, uh, some uh, uh, computer languages for programming uh, those experiments. And in our courses, we provide uh, also uh, uh, this information. Then we have also, 
constrained choice and elective courses. So you have to, among those courses, you have some courses that you have to choose. For instance, uh, uh, we provide a list of courses and you have to choose uh, uh, at least two of them for reaching us an amount of credits. And these courses are uh, neuroscience, neural decoding, philosophy of language, hands of method course. They provide you from the very basic knowledge in neuroscience uh, to how to, for instance, analyze MRI data or uh, MAG data. And then uh, other courses are elective. So in the second year, uh, you should choose uh, at least uh, two courses or 12 credits. Uh, usually uh, each course is six credits, so it's about two courses. Uh, among uh, those other courses, like advanced topics in perception and attention, scientific communication. Uh, in scientific communication, for instance, we try to explain you how to uh, present your data in a uh, workshop or in a, in a meeting, how to uh, write up a paper. Uh, and so this is mainly the organization. Another general thing that I can say about our courses is that uh, courses are mainly in the first year. In the second year, maybe 80% of second year is devoted to uh, internship and uh, master thesis. So you're going to have plenty of time for uh, uh, train yourself uh, on a, a possible research project and for writing up your thesis. Uh, and uh, the final, then the final goal of master course, as I told you, is to prepare you for a possible PhD, which is, uh, uh, if you want, a second step uh, for starting uh, in a career in research, both in academia and in, in private uh, uh, possible uh, situations, as I told you. And uh, later on, there is going to be a presentation of our PhD course here in, uh, in Rovereto. Um, and so I think now it's time for uh, for presenting the other track. So I have presented the continuous science track. Now, Raffaella Bernardi will present uh, uh, the um, language and multimodal interaction track and provide you some other information about uh, our Erasmus Mundus, right? Yes. Agreement. So, Raffaella, sorry. See whether this works. So I will be presenting. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, so I will be presenting two main things: the LMI, which is the other track uh, Massimiliano has been uh, mentioning so far, and the LCT, which is um, a program that we run together with other universities. Uh, so both of them deal with languages. Uh, maybe, I guess, yeah, most of you, if not all, have already been studying things like linguistics, things which require, right? And uh, so the focus of the LMI track is on language, where with language we mean things that you have studied at your linguistic uh, but uh, taken from a more computational uh, perspective. And we look into different levels uh, that uh, language is about, so about the, the, at the lexical level where we care of which are the semantic relations holding among words, things which are conveying the same meaning, things which have a opposite meaning and so on. So in general, anyway, the, the focus and the question we care of in this track is to try to understand how does natural language work. Uh, at lexical level or syntactic level. So at the linguistic course, you have been maybe studied the structure of a sentence, and we try to understand how that structure is built or how that structure has an impact on our understanding of the sentence. 
Um, and then how do we uh, use this meaning that we grasp of natural language in order to make inference to uh, understand more than what we say and we, when we speak to each other we can try to reason about what we said and uh, grasp other things which have been only implicitly said. And uh, again, dialogue is another level uh, that uh, regards language and we try to understand how this dialogue work, which is the structure of the dialogues. Um, and we all look at this from a computer, uh, like with tools coming from computer science. Uh, so we try to get an, an abstract view of these issues and then um, use these issues, these uh, abstraction in order to uh, get a better understanding of that. So we can look into syntax and syntactic tree you have uh, uh, familiarized with, and also use things from geometry in order to understand natural language meaning, uh, um, representing, for instance, uh, words as vectors that are just pointing to a space, and we try to build this representation out of the text that you can find on the web. So out of that, we try to get a representation of the words and see how they, as vectors, and see how they distribute, how they relate using information that comes from geometry. So we kind of steal tools and methods from all the discipline in order to answer our question, how does natural language work? And why the, 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 the track is called LMI? because we also deal with other modalities, especially with uh, vision. So um, again, we kind of uh, uh, take advantage of what computer, computer vision people are doing, have, have achieved so far. They managed to get an image, they managed to get a representation of that, and to uh, uh, understand, interpret the, the image, to recognize the object, the scene, the events that are uh, pictured in the image, and what we care of is using what they have learned so far and see how that can interact with language. So how do we have uh, an understanding, a representation of a natural language sentence? We hear the cute Ari Wampimuk uh, just woke up. We uh, get that uh, sentence, we have a representation of that sentence, and thanks to that representation, then we can also say, well, that picture over there is a Wampimuk. And certainly it's not a sofa, it's not a carpet there. So we make this connection between the two modalities, language and vision, and we try to understand how that interaction works. Uh, so this is, uh, and for people who, uh, who are interested in LMI track, uh, there is the possibility so of like uh, um, develop, uh, acquire further information regarding the language aspect, uh, assuming you have already a background on that, and if not, to get an introduction on these issues, and also uh, develop uh, uh, programming skills that are specifically meant for uh, uh, making you able to process to get uh, like uh, to to process a natural language text and, uh, and get that kind of information we need in order to achieve a representation and to do some text uh, some task uh, regarding that always involve language um, people interested in this track then has the po have the possibility of going abroad especially we have three uh, four <laughs> exchange with the uh, european university edinburgh Groningen, and Saarbrücken and prague uh, so that's usually for one semester. And these are all, if you have uh, kind of an, a view of uh, what's happening in Europe in this field, these are clearly uh, very good universities to, uh, to uh, deepen your, your knowledge and understanding of these uh, issues. Uh, if you are more on the, uh, if you get, want to get more international, and also if you are more interested in the applied aspect of language, then we are uh, part of this consortium offering the European Master Program in Language and Communication Technologies. So here, rather than the theoretical question of how does natural language work, people are really more interested in uh, uh, getting computer uh, understanding, process natural language input, and uh, uh, generate natural language uh, text. Uh, I'm speaking of text, but actually there is also speech involved. So there is also people working on... Uh, on uh, recognition and understanding of speech. Uh, so an LCT application could be this, uh, this one in which you have uh, this guy speaking at the phone in uh, German and that the text is uh, the, the system, the LCT system will understand the text, summarize it and uh, translate into another language like English. So the, the LCT applications are um, uh, meant 
to deal with natural language, that not much more understanding how it works, but to deal with it and making more user-friendly um, uh, system for uh, whoever wants to use machines. So it's more towards the human interaction uh, uh, keywords that uh, uh, Massimiliano was referring before. Um, okay, so they, they oops, sorry. Uh, so it's rather interdisciplinary, uh, lots of technologies involved, and again, lots of stealing from other research areas to get a unique system that deals with uh, the several issues that are required to be faced and uh, uh, solved. Uh, so as I said, it's a consortium of universities, so it's not just us, but we are part of this group of universities. Uh, uh, Saarland is the coordinator. Um, and then there is, uh, besides that, Groningen in uh, the Netherlands, uh, Malta, there is France involved, uh, Prague, Spain, and also two non-European universities. And the reason for putting up a consortium is that because it's so interdisciplinary, none of us can fulfill all the requirements. None of us has all the, offer all the courses and background that are required for somebody who wants to be so interdisciplinary and become a good uh, LCT, a good computational linguist, let's say. Um, why is good to be an Erasmus Mundus? Basically for two reasons. So first of all, it's kind of a good label to have. Uh, it's the EU committee which says, well, this consortium has really put up a fantastic uh, uh, program together. It's a program of excellence recognized by EU as such. So it's kind of a, a label that is good to have but also is good because the EU gives scholarship for students attending these uh, uh, recognized uh, Master of Excellence. So they give uh, a scholarship both for uh, EU and non-EU students, and it's a joint study plan, so it's differently from the Erasmus Plus exchange where you like, are enrolled in one university and you go for one semester somewhere else and uh, learn some of the topics that are offered there. This one, uh, like for in this case, the consortium has studied a joint study plan for the student. And uh, the student at the end get uh, two degrees so one, um, recognized in the, so he studied one year in one university and the second in the other part of universities. And at the end of the program, uh, he or she gets two, two degrees uh, legally recognized in the two countries where uh, he or she has studied, plus a diploma supplement, which is uh, given the, by the consortium in the occasion of the graduation ceremony, which happens every year in a different uni partner universities. So last year it was here in Rovereto, and it was all fun and cool. Um, so if you want to know more about uh, LMI or LCT, these are the links, and you can always drop me an email uh, and I will answer as fast as possible. And now I think it's... Uh, okay. Welcome, everybody. Yes? Uh, it's off? No. No? Ah, OK. The microphone is turned in the wrong way, I was informed. So that's better. Thanks. So welcome, everybody. My name is Angelica Lingnau. I'm a principal investigator here at CHIMIC since a couple of years. And uh, I want to tell you real briefly uh, about the joint education program that we have between uh, the University of Trento and CISA. Uh, please feel free to interrupt me. I've noticed that uh, so far you mainly listen. So if you have any questions, please feel free to raise your hand and ask questions. Um, so what is this about? It's a two years program uh, and similar uh, to the program about, uh, that you heard about before. Uh, you obtain two degrees. One is the Laurea Magistrale in Cognitive uh, Science that you obtain from UNITM, Trento. And the other one is a Diploma or Magister in Cognitive Science at CISA that stands for Scuola Internazionale Superiore di Studi Avanzati di Trest. 
And uh, for those of you, well, I guess most Italians will know where Trieste is. I know that there's at least one non-Italian person here in the room, so this is where Trieste is. We are here in Rovereto, Trento. So you can see it's nicely located at the sea, and just for the fun of it, I put a nice picture of it. So it's a really lovely town, uh, nice at the seaside, has a nice beach, good food, interesting life. So if that's something you find attractive, uh, listen carefully. So uh, what is the rough organization of this joint program? Uh, during the first uh, year, uh, we typically uh, organize an orientation week at uh, CISA, uh, such that you can uh, get to know people there, because obviously you're spending the first year here at uh, UNITN, and this is meant to get in contact with researchers at uh, CISA. Uh, but you're, uh, during the first year, you're attending courses and takes, take exams here in Robert at uh, UNITN that are required for your degree in the Laurea Magistrale. Uh, thanks to the context that hopefully you've uh, set up during the first year with the people at CISA, uh, you will already have a bit of a rough idea of what you're planning to do during your second year at CISA. And uh, in particular, you're uh, expected to ten, uh, attend courses offered by CISA. Of course, you can get information on what these courses are before you go there. They're available through their webpage. And you um, should identify a potential supervisor. This can happen during the second year. My advice would be better to I'd already try to identify that supervisor during the first year. And during the final semester, you're expected to perform your research activity. Again, my advice would be start a little earlier under the supervision of uh, two faculty members. And typically, this is done jointly with one faculty advisor from CISA and one from UNITN. That's why it's called a joint degree. And uh, actually, researchers here in UNITN, uh, at UNITN will be happy if you contact them to figure out if they would be interested in, uh, at, um, in um, con uh, contributing to such a joint uh, project, because that helps us to really um, facilitate uh, collaborations with our colleagues at CISA. So here you're really, um, well, um, uh, encouraged to find out who would be interested in, uh, in helping you with that, with that. And of course, I'm here to help you finding those people. Um, I would also like to encourage you to check the webpage. The, I'm listing all the uh, webpages at the end of this presentation at CISA. So when you go there, you can uh, inform yourself about all the different uh, groups and labs they have there. So for example, they have cognitive neuropsychology, tactile perception, etc., etc. I won't go through all the lists. That's a bit too boring for today. I'm just telling you all this information is there. And if you uh, go in there, you will find out that, for example, there's a group working on collective emotions and social cognitive uh, and the cognitive uh, social cognitive neuroscience lab that work on emotions in groups. And uh, you will also figure out that there's a group that is really, really interested in tactile perception. You're going to have skin. You, all you really need is skin. Skin's the thing that you've uh, got, uh, got it outside. It helps uh, keep your insights in. So that really care about these topics. So if any of this is interesting for you, you might want to have a closer look at this. Um, the application typically happens once per year. Uh, the uh, next uh, deadline is in March 20th, 2015. Sometimes Claudia Neri knows, well, she's not here, she knows more about it. Uh, oh, oh, she's there. Okay, sorry, I'm a bit short-sighted. Um, so uh, typically, if there's, uh, their place is still available, there might be a second uh, deadline later on in the year. And uh, so per year, so far, we have four positions available. And they are selected by uh, a public competition by a couple of um, evaluators. And the, the material that these evaluators will look into is your CV, your recommendation letters, motivation letter, and your uh, expressed uh, interest and experience in relevant uh, research topics. Um, yeah, right. And then to be eligible, you need to have passed the election uh, for being a master, uh, being enrolled in the master program here at UNITN. That makes sense because it's a joint program. And typically, the shortlist is then av made available by the end of April of that year. Um, there are some econo uh, economic uh, benefits. You can read all this online. I'm just mentioning it here briefly. So there's. There are some benefits paid uh, during the first year from UNITN and some benefits paid by CISA during the second year, provided you're there. You cannot just stay here and get their benefits. That doesn't work. And of course, uh, both UNITN and CISA pr provide you to, uh, with access to the facilities, internet, computers, labs, libraries, etc. 
Um, okay, a couple of numbers. This program is still quite young, as is the entire center. So this started in 2010. So far, two students finished uh, this joint degree. We have two uh, second year students that are right now at CISA. We have four year, first year uh, master students that are right here at UNITN or CIMIC. And yes, you can see the nationalities of those students that followed this program are quite mixed. So from US, Bulgaria, oh, twice US, okay, only Latvia, Russia, Italy, Turkey, and India. And uh, here are the contact persons, important to know. So I don't know if these slides are going to be made available. So if yes, here's, uh, this is where they are. So we have two administrative uh, persons being responsible. So one is Federica Tunis uh, Cisa, and one is he sitting here, Claudia Neri. And then we have the faculty representatives, uh, Professor Rumiati at CISA and myself here at uh, UNITN. Feel free to shoot me an email if you have further questions. And uh, here are some links that you may want to look at. And um, if there are no further questions, maybe there are questions. Well, if there are further questions that you don't want to ask right now in front of everyone, I'm also around uh, during the lunch buffet. That's it from my part. Sorry. So, well, uh, now for the moment we can chat informally because we are waiting for Alessandra Cagliari. She is going to present the Harvard and the UNITM program, the summer school. Uh, if you are a student of the, the master of, of, of any of other courses at the UNITM, you could apply for this summer school and this is a sort of joint uh, program, joint school. Uh, and now Alessandra is here, so we can start with the uh, presentation. So I think you need a microphone and also... Okay, so 
Uh, sorry for the delay, first of all. <laughs> My name is Alessandra Cagliari, and uh, I'm responsible for the organization of the Alvar Summer program. Uh, Alvar Summer School is uh, a program in, uh, <coughs> uh, that is organized, organized here in, uh, in Trento, and is a collaboration between uh, the Harvard Summer School and the CIMEC. What is the story of this program? Just a minute, that I check here. So, uh, in 2010, uh, the Harvard Summer School asked to CIMEC to organize a program in cognitive science and neuroscience. And this year, we have the sixth edition of this program. It's a strong collaboration between uh, the Harvard Mind and Brain Behavior Interfaculty and the Center for Mind Brain Science. Uh, what is Exatry? It's an international experience with uh, international faculties that uh, enroll uh, American students with uh, Italian students too uh, in studying uh, brain science and neurocognitive science. Uh, what else? So, the, the program is focused for students uh, of the second, third year degree in, uh, in the university or the first year of master. And uh, I would say that uh, we don't need, uh, we are not asking any prerequisite to, to, ask, to register for this program. We are asking a strong interest in studying mind and brain science and uh, a good English proficiency. This because all the classes are uh, in English, and so it's really important to understand uh, an, uh, um, uh, a proficiency way this language. Uh, let's check. So, general info. This year, the summer will start the 6th of June and will end the 1st of August. It's eight weeks long. Uh, for Italian students, it's possible aptly for just four weeks, uh, but the Harvard students uh, will come here for the entire elite programs. The program uh, and the classes uh, uh, take place the most uh, in CIMEC, Mattarello, but it's possible also that uh, students uh, can come here in Novereto or in the new SCN laboratories in Manifattura Tabacchi. Um, they are st students, uh, American and Italian students, are staying together in the dorms of uh, University of Trento in San Bartolomeo, uh, Trento Sud, and they receive a meal plan from uh, the opera. So it means that uh, uh, for, uh, for the meals uh, you have to go to the cafeteria in Trento or in Rovereto. Course general, uh, the courses generally run from Monday to Thursday in the morning. And uh, in the afternoon, for uh, the American studying, uh, there will be students, there will be also an Italian class. But of course, Italian doesn't have to follow this course. Um, what else? On Friday and uh, in the weekend, uh, we are programming uh, social activities. These activities are made, uh, are organized to, um, to present to all the students, in particular to American one, uh, the Italian culture and tradition. And because of that, uh, uh, we are scheduling visits uh, in the main cities, uh, like Florence, Venice, uh, or uh, Verona too, and uh, some trips in the Alps, uh, on the Dolomites. And um, I would say that uh, it's a really good way to, to uh, build a strong relationship between students, uh, usually in the last uh, uh, in the last year, we had um, very be a beautiful group of students that were working together in the classes, so working, studying together, but also outside, and they are still in contact themselves. So this is really uh, a great thing. So also for your career, if you want to uh, proceed in this field. So this year, in, uh, in the Upper Summer School, um, there will be student faculties from, uh, thank you, from uh, CIMEC, so uh, from University of Trento, from Department of Psychology, from Harvard University, from the Harvard Medical School, again Harvard University, that uh, is Windows into the Structure of the Mind and Brain by Alfonso Caramassa and uh, Jonas Sad. 
and this is uh, take place in June, so it's the first part of the program. Then in July, we have the second part of the program, and uh, you can choose between these two courses, The Social Brain by Marius Pilin, and The Evolutionary and Devel Developmental Origins of Cognition from Sang Ali. Uh, they are both, Marius Pilin is a faculty from the University of Trento, and is in uh, presenting this interesting course, um, Uh, social brain. Well, it's difficult to explain because it's not my file, but um, yes. uh, and their uh, neural uh, correlates uh, in both human and various non-human animals. It means that uh, you will study uh, this function in the human, like person, but also in animals. Some guy is working uh, here uh, in uh, ASEAN department. She's working. Uh, with bee and with other kind of animals. So it's quite interesting studying the brain by this other point of view. About uh, uh, the application. So actually application is open. Uh, the deadline is the 27th of March. The cost of the full course is, is uh, 2,000 euro and it includes accommodation, meal, and uh, all the other social activities. Um, If you, of course, if you are following to just the first, first uh, four weeks uh, or the second four weeks, uh, you are paying half price. It's not possible to divide, uh, decide to do just uh, um, the courses uh, and not stay in, uh, in the dorms with the students. This, because this program is uh, studied, is organized to give uh, a new experience of studying uh, and uh, living together between uh, different culture and this is really the innovative the innovation of this program because for two months uh, students have to stay together all the students uh, are living together studying together going uh, is your financial declaration so i think i told you all about this class um, let's go on so this is just a <laughs> The, the final slide is really short presentation, but it's just to say that um, we had the really great feedback uh, in this last year, and the students uh, that came from America, but also from other Italian university, were uh, really um, very happy to, to have done this course. This is what some students brought from, uh, from America, like this trip exceeded my expectation in every way possible. And uh, yes, I found the classes very interesting because I told you the course is an innovative one. We have this international faculty that is presenting to you a, a subject uh, in, uh, in a different way, like because uh, during the classes, uh, um, the faculty uh, help uh, in, um, help, uh, like, uh, in, let's say, in discussing the subject, uh, the, the lessons uh, We're going uh, uh, in the laboratory to have a uh, uh, hands-on uh, laboratory session. So deadline of application, I remind to you, is the 27th. If you want uh, more information, you can go to the website. You can also download all the application form from the website. And these are the two email, uh, the one email address uh, CIMEC uh, if you need uh, further information about the course, about the classes. And I hope to see some of you this year. Uh, I, I really suggest uh, this, uh, this course is a great option uh, and, uh, for your career. Thank you very much.
You can hear me? Yes, very good. So uh, my role today is uh, to present uh, the PhD program at CIME. And uh, I'm doing this in the role of coordinator of the PhD program. Uh, the PhD program at CIME uh, has now basically had several years to practice and experience with uh, what can be the training of a, uh, a young fellow scientist in the program. And one point that I always want to introduce when I start talking about the PhD program at CIMEC is that uh, I think you should appreciate uh, a discontinuity between your role as a student and your role as a PhD student. So some of you are now considering the master uh, as, a, as, a, as an option and maybe see the, the, the PhD in the future. Uh, I really would like to invite you to think that up until the master, you are definitely a student. During the PhD phase, you have to go from being a student to being a young scientist. And you have to do this in three years, okay? Quite a challenge. It's a challenge for you, it's a challenge for the people who uh, will be your advisors, it's a challenge for the program. And as a PhD program at CIMEC, we try to uh, create uh, the environment that can basically allow for this transition. I think it's a really important transition that you should have in mind. Uh, the PhD is always proposed just like the third level of education after the master. But in fact, it's something that is in between being a student and not being a student anymore. Do you see? So how do we structure it? Um, um, this is, oh, interesting. Let me try again. Okay. Um, the PhD call uh, this year will be issued probably uh, at the beginning of April. And uh, um, the, we are preparing the call now. And these are the main areas, the topics of uh, next year call. Some may add, some uh, may change, but essentially these are the topics. That are the main topics of interest in CIMEC. Um, so animal cognition, computational neuroscience, development, language, learning and motivation, neuroimaging methods and analysis, perception and attention, thinking and reasoning. Uh, within each of these topics, uh, we will detail a series of projects, uh, but I, will, uh, I advise you to go on the website, even after the call is presented, and see exactly which are the uh, projects that will be uh, possible within each of these areas. Because clearly, uh, you have to find also a match between yourself and a, a researcher within CIMEC when you present your activity. I mean, you might be a very brilliant scientist and you present a wonderful project on sleep. Check what uh, each of the scientists in CIMEC do and also uh, look in the uh, web page of the Bando to see uh, exactly what are the, um, the project active that year. Okay? I emphasize this, active that year, because it might be that your ideal supervisor that year is on sabbatical. Okay? And therefore, it would be very difficult for, or impossible for she or him uh, to say, um, uh, yes, uh, I'll be glad to open a project on this. So every year we advertise clearly which are the available project and available supervisor from, for that year. Okay? So keep this in mind when, when making your application. Um, this is just to give you a, a, a brief uh, overview of how the three years are structured. Now, three years is a very short uh, time scale. Uh, so you really have to uh, start with a proactive mind and possibly with uh, an idea uh, already of where you would like to go. The more you have identified your, uh, your interest and, and what really are important matters for you to study, uh, the easier it is to, to, to to do this, pro this program and other programs in, in three years. So this, I'd say, is a general advice 
uh, when um, uh, approaching a, a PhD program. So the way it works at CIMEC is that uh, as soon as you start as a PhD student, you have an advisor, but also what we call the Oversight Committee. The Oversight Committee is a group of minimum three people, including the advisor, that are scientists of CIMEC, but also their institution can be, uh, uh, and typically also students find this uh, extended uh, advisory board uh, helpful. Uh, then, another thing that you have to do at the very beginning, every PhD in Italy starts at the beginning of November, by law, um, uh, you basically have to work out a study plan. So the way you will organize the first one is, well, a very simple set of introductory lectures on what it means being a PhD student, it's essentially the extended version of what I'm giving today, but that's the small part. Uh, a bigger part has to do with your own project, all the train, training activity that are relevant to your own project, starting from very soon alert and aware of what are the potential risks and implications of your actions uh, in research. Um, uh, and finally, there are a number of uh, uh, activities that go from the, what we call the colloquium that are the um, the, you want to know more about MEG, this might be a technique for your research, well, you can take an elective course that basically will give you the, the basics of that, and then you can further uh, depend your knowledge. And so on for TMS or the other techniques, but also say uh, you particularly want to uh, develop or you need to develop certain concepts. First year, uh, you will do your research basically continuously. Um, and uh, um, in, uh, in August, roughly, uh, the idea is you can present a report on what happened during the first year, and at the end of the year there will be evaluations on uh, what you have done. Uh, again, the logical, uh, and again, uh, by the end of the year, uh, there will be another phase of evaluation, this time uh, also with a request to, to uh, complete a literature review on the research topic you will be working on, which essentially is going to constitute the first chapter of your thesis. But it's also very, very important that by that stage, your student present, both as oral presentation and poster, their work to the extended uh, uh, PhD program, meaning CIMEC, but not just, we also had invited um, people last year, and, uh, um, and the idea is this is a perfect context to get the unexpected question beside the expected ones. So those who already know your seminars, lab meeting and journal clubs are all part of the PhD activity, of course. Uh, CIMEC also organized uh, a series of workshops, but I'm not going to reiterate this because I'm pretty sure this has been presented, and the Friday CIMEC meeting is the one I introduced before in which there is a constant update of what is going on. If you have any questions, please let me know. Okay. If there are no questions, I shall return the word to the coordinator.